Wednesday, September 23rd, 2009. Hope everybody is doing magnificent. My name is Derek, and in this video, I'm going to be going over Ron Paul's new book and the Fed. Also, the Federal Reserve had their meetings today. I'll take a quick look on that. There's a link to that in the more info also. And I'm going to explain a little bit on the stock market and today's sell-off at the end of the day. So I'm going to start off with Mr. Paul's brand new book and the Fed. It's really cute because you see the barriers on the Fed just collapsing, if you will. Sort of like the way that the economy is collapsing and I'm not getting paid at all to uh, promote this book. This is something that I have decided to do on myself. I've uh, been using the ad revenues that I get from the clicks on the ads up here and below to be able to purchase stuff like this as that is the only way that I have been subsidized so far on YouTube. So this book here is short, it's sweet, and it looks like it's to the point. Now I haven't read the whole thing yet, I mean I've only had it for a few hours now, but it's 210 pages and just by quickly browsing through it and reading the first chapter, it seems to be one of those get to the point kind of books and 210 pages can be read pretty quickly and that's what I was looking for, so that's pretty cool. And I'm going to read the insert part of it here and then go over the chapters that it has. Most Americans simply accept the Federal Reserve as an indispensable institution, the custodian of the nation's money stock without which our country's economy could not function. But now is the right time to question the very existence of the Fed and the critical role it had in bringing our nation to the brink of economic ruin. The truth is, it is pointless to have a serious economic debate without considering the Fed's role in it all. But here we are, in the face of the most significant financial collapse since the 30s, and instead of a fundamental revaluation of the money machine, what we have gotten is more of the same Fed-enabled bailouts, debt, and liquidity that hobble the economy and threaten hyperinflation. And in the Fed, Congressman Ron Paul gets to the root of our troubles. He weaves history, economic philosophy, and his own life experience from childhood to Capitol Hill to explain how, why, and for whom the Federal Reserve has been pulling the strings of the American financial system for nearly a century and what we can do about it. After all, the time for real change is now. So when I get through this book, I'll uh, be making some notes and uh, be doing some more videos on it later on. The chapters that they have, the first one, Why Should You Care? Origins of the Fed, Intellectual Influences, Central Banks and War, Gold Commission, Conversations with both Greenspan and Bernanke, Congress interest in monetary policy, why and the Fed, the philosophical case, constitutional case, economic case, libertarian case, and the final one, the way out. Those are the 14 chapters in this book, and if you haven't purchased this yet, I highly recommend it. Without even reading much, it just seems that good. Moving on, uh, the link and the more info for this article from CNBC, the Federal Reserve spoke today and they said that rates to be low for an extended period of time. A lot has been said that we don't expect interest rates to be raised. Raising interest rates will cause stock markets to fall big time. And they can't go any lower, of course, as they're pretty much bottomed out. You can't go negative. Uh, interest on it, of course. Uh, they say the economy was in a recovery after a severe downturn and they decided to slow purchases of mortgage debt to extend the program until around the um, end of March of 2010. And I never really got to see any of it, nor did I really want to, but it seems as if it's just moving on to the same old kind of stuff. So we've seen the stock market today lose 170 points on the Dow in the last 80 minutes or so of the trading day with big volume. 
Normally when the Fed does have their minutes, there is big volume. Today was no exception. Yesterday uh, the market was higher, but the YouTube user Bowler Bear Report said it nicely that it was not an up day when the dollar lost as much as it did and stocks barely gained. It pretty much was still a down day. And uh, we are still very high on the major indexes, the Dow, the S&P 500. This isn't to say that we can't go higher. And this also isn't to say that we're going to have a big uh, fall down. But what I'm saying is, is we need to look more at the technical charts to see where we are about to be heading. Basically, you want to look towards the 50-day moving average. This chart that I brought up is the Dow Jones uh, over the last uh, few months. And we could see here that this blue line, which indicates the 50-day moving average, we went below it in July, but it never did decline. First test, as we went to that 50-day moving average, we went above it. So now, when it does go below the 50, and it's a matter of when, not if, the thing on this will be, if it can manage to get above it again, it'll be like the last time, it will never decline. But when you go below the moving average, and then you come up to it the first time, if you pull back lower, generally what that means is a reversal in the moving average. You would then start to see the 50 moving average flatten out and go lower. And many people, many financial institutions, do use this 50-day moving average and this could bring a lot of people to sell when of course it starts to uh, go lower. The volatility index today didn't go up that much as it's at 23.49. It is still very very low. It uh, usually goes up about uh, 3 4 percent when markets go down a percent but it was only up a percent. You really want to see three big factors for this. You want to see it have a rising 50-day moving average, a flat 100-day moving average, and you really want to see it over 30 before we can start to see some uh, high volatility. And of course, volatility seems to go higher when there is selling. Also, the volatility is generally low in the summer. Summer is now over, and we'll see if uh, that makes much of a difference at all. Gold today uh, pretty much broke even. It was down like a buck, now at 1014. And this is very interesting because we're in a very tight trading range with gold, roughly between 1000 and 1020. We have not made new highs on gold yet, but we've held the $1,000 mark very well. And in fact, to have gold pretty much not uh, lose today, and have the dollar gain like it uh, did today shows a lot of strength in my opinion for the gold and the uh, silver market although silver did actually get taken down a, a little bit more than gold did but you know what that's uh, not that's not really that much of a, a surprise anyway so thank you everybody for watching this video remember we need to end the Fed. Peace and light and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.